David, many thanks for joining us. Um, we're less than a week away to the World Championship now. First of all, just tell us how you're feeling ahead of your first trip to Alexandra Palace. Um, excited, really. Um, it's, um, it's everyone's dream to sort of play the World Championships and uh, be on that iconic stage. So, yeah, really looking forward to it. What was your reaction when the draw came out last week? Did you watch the draw live on Sky Sports News? I did, yeah. Um, I actually said, um, said to my mother-in-law, she was watching it with me as well. And um, I have to think after about four names that come out, and I said, I said, I bet I'll get Ross Smith. Um, so I, I just had an inkling, because we're, we're all good friends, me, Joe, Ross. We all, we all sit together when I was playing some of the pro tours when I was uh, in from the Challenge Tour. So I um, just had an inkling that it would be me and Ross, and uh, it was. So. <laughs> Probably on paper, one of the standout ties of the first round as well. Obviously, yourself in great form and, and Ross has been in great form mm -hmm. on the Pro Tour in recent months. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, I've looked through quite a lot of the, um, the draw itself. Um, and yeah, it does stand out quite, quite heavily. Um, like myself, the last 12 months have been, been on form. Um, and Ross, is, he's just been Ross. You know, he's probably got one of the best throws that I've ever seen. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, battling it out with him. Just less than a month since we last saw you in action in the winter series. How have preparations been going since then? Um, just constant practice. Um, constant practice, a few hours here or there. Um, and then it's sort of just having a bit of a chill out, um, stuff like that. And then um, back to the board just before I go uh, to, the, um, to the hotel for the Alley Palace. Yeah. Now, your year started at the, the Indigo 2 for the BDO World Championship, but it's going to finish at Ali Pali. Just how would you reflect yeah. on the, the sort of journey you've been on this year? Because it's been a hugely significant year in your career. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been massive for myself. Uh, I mean, um, I started off with doing like the challenge tours and stuff the last few years, um, the Q school and trying to get my tour card through that way. Um, that didn't work out, but um, this last 12 months, it's just been massive. Um, doing the 12 months on the, on the BDO tour, and getting to the World Championships at the Indigo. Um, and I think playing playing the BDO for that 12 months did stand me in good stead, as well as obviously playing the Challenge Tour as well. It standing me in good stead for ready for um, when the Challenge Tour finally came about a bit. And then um, obviously the um, the Modus League as well. So that, that helped massively. And finishing top of the Challenge Tour order of merit, I mean, how proud an achievement was that given the standard we all know on the Challenge Tour? Oh, it's amazing for me. I mean, I, I thought it was it was no. I was nowhere at one point. I think I was on 150 pounds before that week, um, something like that. So I look at it and go, well, it's it's difficult to do it with 200 odd people in a room um, that are the standard that they are. Um, amazing. I mean, I've, I don't think there's any pro tour player at the moment that would say yes to going back to challenge tour uh, because I personally believe sometimes it's a lot harder than the pro tour. Um, and I don't even think Michael Van Gogh would want to go back to the Challenge Tour. I don't even think he'd think that would happen. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's amazing. It really is. Love it. Now, yourself and Richie Edhouse finished in the top two, and you were probably two of the most active players during lockdown. You, you mentioned there the Modus Icons League. How crucial yeah. was that in terms of keeping yourself match sharp and, and getting that match practice in? Oh, absolutely, absolutely massive. Because, I mean, if, you, if you're playing on your own, um, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't do anything for you. Um, you need to be playing match practice and um, do, having different routines before that and having the right mindset to to sort of play those matches against those top professionals. You know, Martin Adams, Van Barneveld, Phil Taylor when he when he came in, you know, Fallon, everybody. Um, and they're all capable, even though they're playing from their own house, of thinking, I'm going to absolutely demolish you, you know. Um, and that's what they want. Um, so if you have a really good game against, you know, against Richie or Keen Barry and stuff like that, then you're going to want to win. Um, nobody wants to lose at all. It's awful. Um, but yeah, it, it kept us on the ball um, and ready for whatever came next. Obviously, with the with COVID nineteen, and we didn't get managed to play much um, much stuff. So, but yeah, it was it's really good to to be able to do it. So playing from home is a very different dynamic from playing in person. How did you find the adjustment when you went back to to traditional darts? Um, it slightly weird. Um, slightly weird but having that practice on the Modus Icons League um, still standing me in good stead because you're still practicing um, it was slightly weird obviously having somebody behind you and then in front of you and having a marker um, but once you've been playing that Icons League for, for how, however many months we did um, you just get into that mindset of, uh, of just playing against those players and you know you can beat the, some of the best in the world so why not the people that are slightly lower 
And finishing in the top two enabled you to play in the Winter Series. How did you find that first experience of the Pro Tour and uh, qualifying for the Euro Tour as well? Yeah, it's good. I mean, um, I, I played, uh, played the, um, the Pro Tour before. I think it was last year in Dublin. Um, and I played against, I think I beat Ted Evitz and then Gary Anderson and then lost to Peter Wright. So it was, um, that's, that, with that being the first one, I knew what to expect um, in the Winter Series. So it's like, um, just go out there and, and knowing in my own head that I've got my tour card now um, and I have proven that I am capable of mixing it with the best. It's just, you know, put, putting it into practice um, and coming out with a few wins, um, beating Johnny Clayton, um, and then coming up against that monstrous average from Chizzy, but um, it was um, it's a, another great experience to get to test the water before I dip my toe in it. You know, before I, I run uh, run and jump fully into it in January. Yeah, I was, I was going to allude to that 121 average from Chizzy and 105 from Mensa on the Euro Tour. Were they a bit of a, a baptism of fire those games? Um, it just seems that I've, I've always had it made. Everyone wants to play well against me, and it must must be for a good reason. Um, because they know what I'm capable of, so it's um, it's one of those. But um, when they're average 105, 106, and then 121 from Chizzy, you know they're capable of doing it. It's just whether they do it. Um, you know, myself, I've I've gone out there. I mean, I think on the Icons League, I had 113, I think it was. Um, so I know I'm capable of doing that. It's just putting putting it into practice and just seeing um, whether it'll go for the for the year. But I'm I'm looking forward to doing it. Yeah. Just on to Ali Pali, your game is Wednesday afternoon. Um, there are rumours yep. that London might be heading into Tier 3, which would obviously affect the crowd, but that should be after your game if that does happen. Yep. So how much of a buzz is that going to be, being able to play in, in front of up to 1,000 fans? That would be brilliant. Um, I mean, I've played played an exhibition in Manchester before, and that was I think that was 1,500 um, in there. And the, the atmosphere is amazing. So to be able to have um, crowds there that are, that are there to not only enjoy themselves, but to, to watch some darts again after so long. It's, it's brilliant. Um, and especially on that iconic stage as well. So, yeah, um, you know, and a few, a few friends that, um, that live down in London way, you know, they're tier twos and stuff like that. And Liverpool, got a few friends in Liverpool, they're tier two. So they've been able to come down, um, come down and watch. So to have them there and, and obviously me, um, my wife and, uh, and mother-in-law can come down as well, obviously bearing in mind of a COVID test, but, um, but yeah, and looking forward to having them all there supporting me as well. So, any kind of nerves yet thinking about it, or is it more excitement? Excitement, I think. Yeah, um, I mean to be on there, um, you know, first time on Sky Sports, etc. First time in the Alley Pally, um, actually playing. Um, you know, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's um, it's going to be an experience I'll never forget. Have you got any kind of expectations in your mind, or are you just going to go out and enjoy it first and foremost? Just enjoy it. I know. I know my game's there. I know I'm capable of um, of playing against the best and, and beating some of the best. So um, it's just a case of you know don't don't let my head go above the clouds. Just sort of keep my head below them and just get on with the game and start to um, show the world what I can do. Certainly, it doesn't get any easier if you were to, to come past Ross Smith. It would be Jose de Sousa. I mean, yep. how much of a carrot is that to be able to play the, the Grand Slam champion if you were to come through that first game? Yeah, if I if I come through that first game against Ross, it's um, it's going to be, um, I wouldn't say a weird game. It'd be um, a mind-boggling game because he's um, he's very different. His Jose, he's um, he's got his own way of going for different things and um, things like that. And that's probably why they call him the special one. But um, yeah, he's um, he is a character. I've seen him. I've seen him on the Winter Series. So um, it uh, seems like a very nice character as well. So um, I would look forward to that if I beat Ross. Yeah. You're part of the, the modus management stable who look after Michael Van Gogh and Simon Whitlock and a number of top players. Yep. I mean, how much of a boost is that to be involved in, in that team and to have that, you know, those sort of players around you? It's amazing. I mean, um, the guys at Modus and um, and Sports Icons as well, they've they've been absolutely amazing, Billy and Jason. They're absolutely brilliant. Um, anything that I need, you know, they they sort it for me and then um, make sure that I'm looked after as well. So, um and then obviously you've got the, the added thing that um, Michael, Simon, um, etc. All the all the top players are with Modus at the moment, and um, and it's it's good to have that sort of them people behind you, sort of you can nip to them and ask them for any advice and things like that as well. So but yeah, they've, they've been brilliant over the last three. I think it's my fourth year, or nearly nearly fourth year now with them now. So yeah, I'm looking looking forward to staying with them uh, potentially for the future as well. So. Just finally looking beyond the World Championship, you're going to be on the tour for at least the next two years now. Have you set yourself any targets at all? 
Um, for for the first year, just um, just enjoy it really. Um, enjoy it. You know, I know what I can do, um, and just try and sort of um, not be at the bottom, <laughs> not be at the bottom of the rankings. Um, just keep pushing on, pushing on, and just keep doing what I'm doing. Um, eventually, it'll come, and then um, all of a sudden, it's um, you look you look from nowhere, and you you win one one major competition, and you're up there within. The best, the best in the world, in top sixteen, like Jose's done. So, um, and obviously Glenn's done it as well. So it's um, it, it's it's amazing. Um, I mean, if you look at if you look at the story with, with myself at the minute, Steve Bunting did it. Um, came straight from the BDO, BDO World Champion, straight to the PDC, and then I think he won a couple of hundred thousand pounds in the first year. So it, it's 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 there to be done. So um, if they can do it, I can definitely do it. Yeah, do you look at players like Stephen Bunting and, and Glenn Durant as well, and, and they are kind of inspiration? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm good friends with Stephen. Um, we do uh, we do practice at the um, at the Gerard as Gerard Arms in um, St Helens when we're allowed to. Um, but yeah, um, they've they've given me some massive inspiration really of seeing what they can do and whether I can do it as well. Um, he's practiced quite a lot with Stephen as well, so he's given me some tips and pointers along the way of. Um, Making sure that I can I can get through it, and um, now I'm finally on the pro tour. Now it's um, it is down to those guys and um, to the practice as well. Um, so it's um, and I've been practicing recently with, with my friend Mark uh, Mark Kingdon. So he's um, he has been um, practicing with me, and um, Mark and Fran have been uh, they're real good friends as well. So they've been helping me through stuff, and obviously my wife Danielle and my mother-in-law as well. So yeah, it's um, all those people that. Um, that believe in me, it's um, down to them, really. A number of players on the tour balance uh, a day job with playing professionally. Is that going to be the same mm-hmm. for you, or are you going to give it a go full time? No, I've, I've, I've been I've been full time since two thousand eighteen. Um, two thousand eighteen, I'd, I'd uh, gone full time, and then um, just thought about concentrating on it. Um, I did try and go back to work, but it, it just didn't work because um, I wasn't able to put the the time and the effort into practicing as well as working as well. So. I just couldn't do it, so it was. Um, it's one of those been full time now for since 2018. So I just carry that on. And just finally, have you got your walk on sorted for the world championship? Yeah, um, it's it's a it's a bit of a weird one because um, my walk on song is Giant um, by Calvin Harris, um, but also Martin Clearmakers is the same thing. Yeah. So it's um, it's a bit of a weird one. I have actually got in touch with um, a, a friend of mine, Mitchell Parker. Um, he's um, He's basically a, a music artist um, and um, writer um, and a very good one at that. So I've, he's done a little bit of a mashup for me and um, I'll see whether that's acceptable on there as well. So, um, but yeah, it's, um, they're, they're a massive sporting family as well. So you've got um, Mitchell, who's the, who's the music side of it, and then his, um, his sister, Lauren Parker. She's a um, 6 times winner of uh, boxing. So she's um, number six in the world in the female boxing world. So... Um, very sporting family and also very supportive as well. So, um, but yeah, they've he's sorted me that music out. So whether it's acceptable, which it, it should be, <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to, have to see. <laughs> well, David, thanks very much for your time, and uh, we look forward to seeing you making your debut on that world championship stage. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Cheers, Jamie. Thanks.